If you're using the DJI M30T for public safety operations, no doubt at some time you'll have use for a searchlight or a broadcast module. In this video, we're going to talk about the CZI LP12. This is a searchlight and speaker combo system that mounts directly on the M30T. Today we're going to demonstrate how to install the LP12 right on the M30T right out here in the field. And then we're going to take it out for a test run and do a few field tests. And after sunset this evening, we're going to go out and do a field test of the searchlight and show its capabilities as well. So stick around and find out what happens. Okay, let's start by just showing you what's inside the kit. So the LP12 comes in like a foam carry case. It's not exactly a watertight hard case, but it's actually a pretty good case. Uh, there are a couple little latches on the side that you can unlatch here. And then of course we get a handle on the front. So we'll just flip open those latches. And there is our contents. So everything that we should need to set this up on the M30T is included right in this kit. We have the combination searchlight and speaker combo. And then of course we have a cable that will plug into the USB-C port on the drone. And you can see there's a couple of rails on here and that will slide into this uh, included accessory that we'll take out in just a minute. You'll notice that the searchlight is movable. Later on when we get this thing attached, you're gonna see how we can synchronize the searchlight with the gimbal. So the light is looking where the camera looks. So that's one of the features that makes us stand out from some of the other add-ons. Uh, we see this broadcast module has more of this megaphone design which will really broadcast the signal outward. Uh, we have a little trap door on the side which will allow us to attach a micro USB. Okay, we also have probably a two millimeter hex wrench is included in the kit. We have this mounting hardware. So this is the rail that will actually mount right onto the drone. There are some included screws. This is a quick release. So once we attach this to the M30T, all we have to do is press this button to slide the LP12 on and off the aircraft. So we have that. And we also have a micro USB cable also included. And we have our instruction books, of course. And then we have a cloth in here that we can use to wipe the oils and things off the lenses. The one thing to keep in mind whenever you have a really high powered LED style light like this is you want to make sure that those lenses are completely clean and free of oils and things like that because this is going to get really hot and if you have like a fingerprint or something on there you could kind of burn that into the lens so that would not be good. So that's why we have the cloth. So there you go, there are all of our included accessories. So let's uh, go ahead, we'll uh, take out our wrench, our mounting hardware. Okay, included in our kit was some small threaded screws and we have a bag of six of those. You'll notice when you dump out the contents, you're gonna have some long ones and some short ones. So you're gonna need two of the long ones and two of the short ones and then we get a couple of spares. The way that this mounting hardware works, you'll notice that the front posts are a little bit longer than the rear posts and the reason for that is is the front of the aircraft kind of slopes down just a little bit so this will actually make it sit level on there so you can kind of test fit it so when you put it on the button if you're facing the front of the drone the button is on the right hand side this is the release mechanism so what we're going to do is we're going to take the two longer threaded bolts and we're going to get those started just get the first couple snug without tightening them up too much they have a little bit of thread lock on there. You can see a little bit of blue. And then we'll go ahead and do the back ones. And then once they're all kind of in place, then we'll snug them up. Okay, so they're all in. Now we're gonna just tighten them up, not over tight, just get them snug. We're ready to go ahead and install the LP12. So you can see there's just a couple of rails here. So it's just gonna slide on right from the front like that. And then you'll just hear it click, okay. So this is the button right here, the release mechanism. So when we push back, you'll just hear that click. And then to release it, of course you press that and slide it forward. So as with all of this stuff, anything that's got a little rubber trap door or anything, you gotta make sure that's secure. If you wanna maintain the integrity of the water protection, that plugs up that little micro USB port. All right, so this is secure. We can test it by trying to slide it off and it's not going anywhere. So the next thing we've got to do, install this. 
you'll see that there are two of these ports on the top, so just to know which one uh, to use. This is just for accessing the hardware, you know, via your computer if you want to use DJI Assistant. And then this is actually the accessory port, and you can see it's got those two little brass posts in there, and those will kind of snug up around those little notches in this accessory cable here. So we'll go ahead and push that in. Plugs in nice and tight. So this is going to be open. All right, so that is now officially installed and that didn't take long at all. Now I want to demonstrate the control interface. On the lower right hand side, I have an icon that reads PSDK. So I'm going to touch that icon and then that reveals eight smaller icons. So the top two on the left are to toggle the light up and down. We can adjust the angle of the light manually that way. As we go down, we can toggle the light on or off. So our choices are light on, our light flash. And then if I want to change the intensity of the light, let's stop that for now. Okay, so we got to come all the way down here and uh, we can change our light power here. So I would caution you that if it's just parked on the ground and you turn that light up to 100%, it's going to get hot. Put that down for now, just for demonstration purposes. Then this icon right here, I can toggle on or off that synchronization between the camera and the light, or I can have independent control of the light. Over here is just uh, an informational button, and it shows whatever MP3 file is. Uh, it also gives us uh, the light temperature, tells us if that light is on or off, it currently is on. We have our volume is currently set at 30 out of 100, and then it tells us what firmware version that we're in there. Okay, and then we'll toggle on the next one. So this is where I can record and broadcast an audio file. So there's a difference between record and broadcast or live broadcast. So if you do live broadcast and you're too close to the drone, you're gonna get some audio feedback. Record and broadcast means you're gonna record it and then basically send that file to the drone, which will then replay it. That way you won't get the feedback. So you can toggle that here using that icon to either record and broadcast or real time. Real time is the one that'll give you the, the feedback loop if you're too close to it. Uh, and then here, of course, uh, I can use the text-to-speech function, which is a little bit funky. Some of the dialects in there are a little bit difficult for me to understand, but uh, you have some options in here as well. I saw one of the submenus for the text-to-speech is I can slow down the speed at which the, the text is, is broadcast. Hello, testing. Hello, 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 testing. So as you can see, that's not the easiest thing in the world for me to understand so I'm just going to back out of this for now. So now I'm back to my main menu here again. All right so the thing we want to demonstrate here is we're going to do that that broadcast where we're going to record our audio and then we're going to send it. We also have the option to pre-record some messages or we can download some mp3 files. There's a way to do that as well. So let's go ahead and launch the aircraft and conduct an audio test. We're going to do a quick test of the audio system on the M30T and the CZI LP12. And we'll go ahead and initialize the motors. Okay, I'm going to do audio tests at um, starting at 200 feet and then going out from there. Okay, I'm going to climb to an altitude of 100 feet and then I'm going to go out 200 feet away for our first test. Okay, looks so like my altitude is 100 feet and I'm already at 200 feet away. Okay, I'm rotating the aircraft to face me. Now I'm going to access the icon for the microphone and I'm going to do a record and broadcast audio test from 100 foot altitude and 200 feet distance. Audio test from 100 foot altitude and 200 feet distance. Okay, that was awfully loud. So let's go ahead and back up to Let's double that. Let's go to 400 feet. So we're at 400 feet. Let's zoom in and get an eyeball where we're at from the test site here. Let's run that audio test. Audio test from 100 foot altitude and 400 feet distance. Audio test from 100 foot altitude and 400 feet distance. Now we're going to go to 600 feet. There's 600. Audio test from 100 foot altitude and 600 feet distance. Audio test from 
All right, so 600 feet away, I feel that that's a sufficient test for today. Well, we just did an audio test and that was a record and delay broadcast. So we got to 600 feet away and we still had a very audible signal. Definitely a, a very usable megaphone feature on this. It's much louder than some of the other ones that we've been testing. Uh, after the sun sets tonight, we're going to go ahead and test that searchlight as well. Okay, this is a nighttime test of the M30T affixed with the CZI LP12 searchlight and speaker combo. Okay, we're going to go ahead and power on the light at this time. Okay, there we go. Holy cow, that is really something. That looks like the bat signal. Okay, we're going to take off. Initializing motors. Okay. That is stunningly bright. I cannot get over how focused like that beam is. That's crazy. We're on the wide angle camera right now. My altitude is 200 feet, so I know I'm in a safe distance. Holy crap, that is really something. It is just a really tight, focused beam. Got a little light up my house. Wow. Okay. Well, here, I'm lighting up where we are. I mean, look at this. This whole area is all lit up. Let me get the light focused on me here. There, I'm right in it. Okay, so this drone right now is at an altitude of 223 feet, and this whole area is just totally lit up. I'm gonna climb it up a little bit higher here, and that'll broaden the beam a little bit. Let's get up to 300 feet. Okay, we're at 300 feet right now. Look at this. It's like daylight. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, well, let's test the beam out a little bit and look around. I'm going to come down a little bit. I think 200 feet is probably a little bit more of a reasonable altitude. I'll just light up the side of my house. My wife is probably going, what the heck? Okay. That's my deck right now, and I'm looking at it from an altitude of 200 feet. See that car going by? And the brightness right now is at 100%, so we're gonna turn that down to about 50%. Let's see how that looks. Still though, man, it's just, it's really something. Okay, so I just described what I'm seeing here. So I took off the drone, I activated the light, I put it at 100% first, then I realized it was so stinking bright that I did not need 100%, so I've turned it down to 50%. Now I'm flying around, and I have this like really tight circle. Like I said, it reminded me of the bat signal. And it's just this tight focus beam. Anything that's inside that beam, I can just see ever so clearly. And right now I'm scanning the deck of my house with it. I used it to light up where I'm standing right now. And I feel like I'm standing underneath a big floodlight right now. Um, I've been flying for a while here still at 66% power, so I got plenty of power left. I feel like I could even turn this down more and it would still be plenty. You know what I should do? Let's do IR. Here's the interesting thing about IR, this incredibly bright spotlight, which I'm just gonna turn off right now. You notice that when I turn off the light, it makes no difference on infrared. Why? Because infrared doesn't use the, the spectrum of light that our eye sees. It's looking for heat energy. So I'm climbing around 170 feet right now. Uh, this woods is usually full of deer. I don't know if we'll see any tonight. So we're just moving around the woods a little bit. And there's a creek over there. There's my house. Just a few.
few closing thoughts here. The mounting process was really simple. All the tools, everything I needed was included right in the kit. As soon as I installed this and powered up the Pilot 2 app, the icon appeared right away. I didn't have to install any other software. I would recommend that you take some time to learn the control interface. Um, there was just a few nuances in there that took me three or four tries to get correct. That's something you don't want to try to sort out at the field. As with any new piece of hardware, I do recommend that you train on it before you try to put it into service. Okay, some of the features that I liked, the broadcast quality was tremendous. I got 600 feet away, I could hear this thing plain as day. So I could have continued that test and probably gone out another three, 400 feet and still been okay. I had the sound level turned up to 100%. It didn't sound distorted to me, so it seems like the driver in this thing can handle the full volume setting. You can store pre-recorded audio messages in the remote controller. You can download those as MP3s or you can record them ahead of time. The, the live broadcast works just fine. If you're too close to the drone, you will get some feedback loop. If you do the uh, record and then broadcast, that takes care of that problem. There won't be that feedback loop coming through. There's a space right in the original M30 case to accommodate this accessory. You don't need to carry around that extra case. Everything will just fit right in there. So there was some forethought when they designed that case that everything will just fit right in there. When you disconnect the device, you can leave the PSDK bracket mounted to it. That is just a slide release. In the future, if they come out with other accessories, that will just slide on there and attach to it. But uh, that was all included in the kit. So this device retails at $2,000, so it's not cheap, but it is a very nice add-on to your M30T. So if you're out doing search and rescue operations or inspections, anything where you need that bright focus beam light, this would be a good accessory for you to get. This is Bill with Tidal Town Drones. Thanks for watching. Fly safe and return to home.